Come on, Jesus. Jesus is a real star. I'm just as hype. Come on. In your face section with Pete Cabrera Jr. Oh, Jesus, baby. Yeah. Hey, guys. My name is Pete Cabrera Jr. with Royal Family International University and School of Identity and Lifestyle. And you are listening to the All Jesus Podcast. And tonight, we're going to be hitting the subject. Do not suffer for your sake. Suffer for Christ's sake. What does that even mean? That means that sometimes we suffer the wrong way. We usually suffer for things we shouldn't be suffering for instead of suffering for the things we need to be suffering for. And so today we're going to be talking about why do we even need to suffer? And why do we have this amazing gift, which is called the fruit of the spirit, which is long suffering? Yeah, that's one. I guess. That's I want that one. I don't want that. One. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh, funny. Man. I don't want it either. But you know what? We got to have it. You got it. We got to have it. So I'm just going to read this real quick. And we're going to have at it. Suffering. How does one learn to suffer in Christ and maintain a positive attitude? We usually suffer for our sake. Very rarely do we suffer for Christ's sake. Let me explain. Suffering for your sake means you suffer because you aren't getting what you want out of the situation or person or circumstance. Suffering for Christ's sake means you suffer so Christ gets the glory in every situation and outcome at all costs, at the cost of your feelings, at the cost of carnality, at the cost of pride and emotions and all the other stuff that you're wrestling with. We sacrifice all the time. We sacrifice all, all the time when it comes to that. That's a crazy thing, man. man I'm telling you. We sacrifice all that stands in the way of who Christ is for us. And in doing so, we suffer. And that's the issue. We learn obedience through suffering. We learn who Christ is for us in every situation, good or bad. Yeah, that's the part we don't like. Let's not forget, obedience is a choice. We should find happiness in that. Happiness is also a choice. We get to choose whether we are happy or whether we are sad in the midst of suffering. That's up to us, right? Circumstances out of our control cannot change the state of being we've committed to in the Christ. No matter what happens, we choose to be happy. Happiness is a feeling or an emotion. Is that what they say? Maybe maybe happiness is a choice. You ever thought about that? It's crazy, right? It's crazy. So maybe, may, give us some thought. Happiness is a feeling or emotion we experience after we have received something that we believe has benefited us. Gratification, an emotional reward that, re, that we receive for getting something good out of a circumstance or situation. You ever thought about that? Basically, something happens to us that feels good. Yet, yeah, good is not a feeling. It's a person. God is good. What if feeling good is really feeling God? That's just a crazy thought, right? It means this. What if in the midst of your circumstances, you choose to feel God, regardless of what you're going through, right? Luke 18, 19, why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose yeah. so how does one feel good about a bad situation mm -hmm. we must come to understand that god is working about working it all out in our favor which means that stuff might happen to you that you might not want happen to you but it's happening for a reason and you can find the good in that right what if training in the mindset what if training in that mindset is about um receiving everything as a challenge receiving everything as a a test. Maybe, maybe you're being tested. Maybe you're being put through certain things. So how does one feel good about bad situations if you don't even know what's happening? What if you're just like at the mercy of your feelings, right? Mm -hmm. What if we train in the mindset that everything that happens to us, good or bad, is presenting to us an opportunity for us to grow? So then the question is, how can I benefit from this circumstance? And how should I respond in the midst of my suffering to ensure growth and not stagnation in my walk with Christ? So then when something that we perceive as bad begins to happen to us, we get to find out who the Christ is for us in every circumstance. Most people I know will look for fault in everything that happens to them, especially in relationships. When we look at fault in our mates, instead of what's good and what should be basically what should we, we could be focusing on, we only find the bad in everything, right? And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So when we try to be happy, our father helps us. So let's make up our mind to be happy. Count it all joy. So the question is, tonight, with Pastor Will and myself, is in the midst of suffering, how in the heck, how in the heck can we be happy about 
stuff that happens to us. Like, how do we do it? Right? And that's what we're going to talk about tonight, man. It's not easy. That's for sure. Oh, man. It's not easy. But it's worth it, for real. Sweet Jesus, man. man. And I got some scriptures that we're going to talk about tonight. But realistically, man, you know, I was always taught, you know, the reason the enemy's attacking you is because if he wasn't attacking you, you really wouldn't be doing much. And that that's, and I'm like, but sometimes I'm attacking myself, Come man. Come on now. now sometimes, talk. you know, sometimes I'm sitting there having these thoughts in my head, you know, like for instance, let's say I want to get something done around the house and I'm not seeing it get done with my kids or whatever. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, you know, better than that. Right. And then I started addressing it from this negative perspective and then it just starts to grow, man. And then you see the trash can and you look over there and then you see stuff on the floor and you got all this and this thing starts growing, man. And then you start taking it out on people. And how do you handle that stuff, especially in ministry, bro? Come yeah, on, man. Man, come on. You, did, did you want to address now. any of that, man? You're talking now. I mean, I could testify to it daily, you know. <laughs> You can you can expect someone else to do it. You can just do it yourself. You know, reality of Christ is he was the example of what it took to suffer, you know. And so a lot of times the suffering that we're dealing with is all because of our thoughts. They ain't right. You know, we're looking to gain, but Christ says for whoever loses his life for my sake, he shall find it. You know, and so we're always looking to find things, but Christ has already given us, given them to us. So um, it's just tough, man. It's tough. This is a very sensitive, um, in, in this place, man, is is to find out that you're truly suffering for the Lord and yourself. You got to be willing to step into God in the midst of what you're going through and allow him to speak to you. So not speak you out of it or speak you into something else, but simply just coming to the father and saying, Hey Lord, you know, what are you doing in this? Not what I'm looking to get out of it. Not what I'm looking to get others out of it or to do, but simply asking the Lord, what are you working on in this? So. Yeah, that's interesting, man. That's right. I'm just looking at my screen here. While nah, you're, good, you're good. But yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go through some scriptures, man, and maybe we can explain what is actually happening. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I'm going to read a scripture first Peter three 14, mm -hmm. right? It says, but, and if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you and be not afraid of the terror, neither be troubled. Okay. That sounds real easy, man. Like you look at this on a piece of paper and you're like, yeah, okay. Um, but if I suffer for righteousness sake, so how do you, okay. When it says suffering for righteousness sake, right? When it says suffering for righteousness sake, what does that mean? For, for setting the example of Christ among others who, who aren't. Sometimes our light is radiating, you know, and, and others believe they're walking in the Christ. And when God exalts us to another level, you know, um, being made in his image, you know, people, sometimes they'll ridicule you. Sometimes they'll come against you, man. Sometimes they'll keep you. Have you ever gotten saved before and you wanted to share Christ with everybody else and they just couldn't comprehend, you know, uh, what that change was in you. You know, you, you had an encounter with God. You started believing in God in his ways, in his life. You started making changes. And those that you love, those that you wanted to get saved, they just didn't understand it. And so you you felt like you were being persecuted. Um, that's an example I, I, I choose to share tonight. You know, well, well, bro, like for me, right, like that's outwardly. But for me, when I read 1 Peter 3, 14, I'm going to read it again. Mm -hmm. But if you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you and be not afraid of the terror, neither be troubled. Like when I read this, I, I, I suffer all the time, man, to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Like just yeah. for me, yeah. I'm not even talking about people that are watching. Mm -hmm. I'm not even talking about for my wife and my kids. I'm just talking about like, you know, I get up in the morning and I'm like, man, I don't, I don't really want to pray right now. Mm -hmm. I want to lay here. <laughs> right. Like I don't want to get up. Right. Or you know what? I don't I don't want to read right now. Like I'm like, am I gonna do this again? Like yeah. I'm just gonna like, so this is Christianity. I'm just gonna be in my Bible the rest of my life and read this over and over and over. Yes, right. And so you have this thing, you start suffering, man. And then your friends come over, right? And they're like, Hey, you want to go fishing? And and you're like, Oh, yeah, I got some commitments, man, that I gotta do. I got some things I gotta get done. And and so I'm trying to do the right thing, right? I'm trying to always do the right thing. So how do you know the line between doing the right thing for Christ and then you just being too hard on yourself or condemning yourself because, you know, you're trying to be the best you can be, but at the same time, 
you got these struggles, right? And you got these thoughts in your head and, 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 and it just feels like you're not good enough. But even though, um, you, you may feel like you're not good enough. You're just doing your best. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a, like now I'm talking out of a pastor's head right now, you know, we, we, you know, it, it, we're called to sacrifice, man. That's, that's hard being a pastor, being a leader. You, you gotta be open to, you know, you gotta hold yourself accountable. So it's really hard. You can't do the things you once did. So, and, and like, okay. Like for instance, I give an example. So you remember when Jay Measy was here? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Jay Measy, man, we're, we're carrying him out of the house. Right. I'm just look, I know, man. Come on. <laughs> no, don't bring that up. I know, bro. but I'm just talking about me though. No, I got you. Right? Like I got me. You. Right? Like me myself. Like, how could I be a better example around all the situation that had happened? Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> like how like I was trying to do the right thing, right? But it's just the the funny part of me. Right. The the joking around part of me, the part that wants to joke and laugh and and like like I'm biting my tongue. Right. Because I, I want to say something because I want to be funny. And and how do you know? Like I'm I'm suffering, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, like I'm suffering because I'm like, when am um, I ever going to get this opportunity to say this? Like this is going to be so funny. Right. Yeah. And so even in that, man, you know, and. You know, I think about stuff like that. Like, I, you know, I lay in bed and I'm thinking, man, I could have did that a little bit better. Or I could have handled that a little bit better. And so, you know, and so that's that's the way that I suffer in certain areas, man, because I like to joke around. I like to to go out with my wife, have a good time. But then at the same time, I'm remembering that, you know, people are watching me, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and that I'm, I have to be an example to everybody else, you know. And that's hard for me sometimes, you know, because – I want, you know, to have a good time with my wife. I want to have fun. And so how do you know where the line's at, right? Because then you get around certain people and they're, they could be judgmental. They could be super religious, you know, and you don't know where the line's at. You're like, are they going to say something? How am I not? And so you want to do the right thing all the time. But then I ask the Lord, like, you know, check my heart and stuff like that. So it's like, it's a, and I don't know, maybe you guys understand what I'm saying. You know, maybe, I don't know. But anyways, that's kind of where I'm at on that. <laughs> That's a, that's a thin, there's a thin line between love and hate. So, oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, if, if that line is being drawn by everybody else, you know, you're never going to get the line right. Yeah, man. You know, it all depends on your consistency with Christ, too. So, yeah, man. That's really what it's about. Man, that's, that's a tough call, man. I know. I know, man. So, let me hit another scripture real quick. Yeah. Right. So, First Peter 4, chapter 1 through 2. Therefore, since Christ suffered in his body, Arm yourself also with the same attitude. Okay, we got to talk about attitude, bro. Because whoever suffers in the body is done with sin. And as a result, they do not live in the rest of their earthly lives for the evil human desires, but rather for the will of God. And so in this First Peter chapter 4, 1 and 2, it's talking about arming yourself with the same attitude. So that means that an attitude can be a weapon. If yes. you're arming yourself, yes, right? And it says here that he was suffering in his body. So does that mean that when things were happening to him, he had to arm himself, which means I'm going to have a certain attitude about what's happening to me, even though I'm suffering in my body, even though things are happening to me, even though, you know, like, man, he was going to the cross and, and they struck him. And he said, for what, for why do you strike me? Right? Like, why did, why did you hit me? For what offense do you hit me? And so he's asking a question, but at the same time, like, I don't think that would have been me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, if yeah. you'd have struck me, man, you try know. Uh, don't try me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I'm just talking about just getting slapped. Bro, I'm not even talking about a dirty look at Walmart. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not even talking about you know, standing in line for a long time. I'm not even talking about like how hot it was downstairs making the coffee. And I'm like, man, I'm hot. You know, like, I'm not even talking about that. I'm just talking about, you know, things that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I teach identity. So the Christ in you is always trying to nudge you into that place, always trying to bring you into that place. And so, you know, tonight, guys, we're talking about suffering for our sake 
versus suffering for Christ's sake. And we suffer a lot because we're not getting what we want. We're suffering a lot because we're mad or we're upset or maybe the turnout wasn't what we wanted or maybe we didn't get what we needed. And so how can we turn that suffering, you know, because the scripture says suffer for Christ's sake, you know, and sometimes you could suffer your whole walk and you never did it for Christ once. You did it because, you know, you didn't get the honor. You didn't get, you know, the raise. You didn't get the amens. You didn't get the call. You know, you didn't get the, you know, like, what do you do with that? Like, as a pastor, bro, like, my yeah, Lord. You just got to understand that suffering produces, you know, character, man. You know, God's building your character. In those, in those circumstances. Who you doing it for? You know, that's really, you know, if you're looking for the amen, if you're looking for the, yeah. the, the, the following, if you look at who are you doing it for, you know, in those circumstances, that shows you. It don't show other people, it shows you. You know, that's crazy because I, I actually just read that online uh, media, just media like TikTok and all this stuff, that people who do it for the approval of people and they don't get the likes and the thumbs up, it causes <laughs> mental illness. Man. It causes mental illness because they're doing it to receive something, right? And which means they're losing themselves in everything except the Christ. So they're getting, so they're not even being themselves online, right? Like they're doing certain things and acting a certain way. They're creating content that ain't even real. Like they're walking around with microphones and they're just doing stuff to get the, the likes. No, I know ministers like that. I know men of God like that. They, you know, they put on conferences to get the amens, right? They put on the, the shows, they get the lights and, the, and man, I came out of that, bro. And so you could lose your mind in that. You can actually find your identity in something Sheesh. else too that you think is Christ. <laughs> the the wrong type of glory man <laughs> and you could suffer man you could suffer and that's what i mean by suffering for your sake because you suffered because it's what you wanted you suffered is because you did the work you suffered because you expected right and there has to be a shift in there you know so first peter chapter 4 one two, i'm gonna read it one more time therefore since christ suffered in his body arm yourself also with the same attitude I don't know if you know this or not, but attitude means everything Amen. in the kingdom of God. You know, go ahead, brother. Man, I, I think, you know, that would relate more to like what Paul was saying in Philippians 3, you know, um, in verse 80, he says, yeah, doubtless, or give me a second here, forgive me, yeah. He says, verse 7, but what things were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. That's got to be an attitude. Yeah. You know, and then he goes on to say, yeah, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. And, and this is the key. I, I think it says, and I count them but dung. You know, can you count the things that you suffer of no value? You know, that's really where you gain that image at yeah. where, where God becomes pleased, you know, because it's faith that pleases God, you know? Now, this is Apostle Paul who was trained mm -hmm. <laughs> under the best rabbis who had every credential you could think of. Yes. Right? And he said all of it was dung. Yes. All, all of it. it. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> and that's... What? And that's a nice word. Yes. Because that's not even the word it's saying in Greek. Mm -hmm. The word it's saying in Greek is a word we can't say. Yes. Yes. And that's the word he used. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's crazy because yeah. that's what shows you that you're found in him. You know, <laughs> that wow. you're found in him. So it's through that that you get to know that you're found in him and not yeah. in yourself, you know. So yeah. who you're suffering for. And it's just amazing how the word reveals that to us. So, so how many people could look at everything that they've accomplished and said, it's all dumb. Not too many. <laughs> I think that's a, I think that's a lifelong thing. Oh my there. gosh. I like think I, that's a lifelong thing. It's like Solomon, right? What's he like? He's like, it's uh, all vanity. <laughs> yeah. But he said that after he already had experienced yeah, I, everything. It, it like, let's be up. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, I mean, it's cool when you're coming out the other end of that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because he could say that because he'd experienced it all. 
right? But for those who ain't experienced anything, you know, you, you can't say that, mm -mm. right? Now faith is, right? The substance, right? Hebrews 11, 1. Like, yes. like he understands what life's about now because he went through the ringer. Yeah. Man, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, oh my gosh. Yeah. Hey guys, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like and the share button on this, I'd appreciate it. We want to get as many people on here as possible. Um, so attitude, right? Hey, have, have you ever, have you ever had somebody around you that just had an attitude all the time and, and you have to tell them like, Hey man, like what's going on? Like, I got a friend of mine, bro. I always tell him, Hey man, fix your face. I always tell him that fix your face, man. Right. And he's like, what you mean? I'm like, bro, you know, I'm a minister, bro. Like you can't be around me looking all Eeyore and stuff. Yes, you gotta yes. be smiling, come man. Now, come on. Like, come now. on. I got the joy of the I Lord in me, bro. Joy. But then they look over here and they see you like, yeah. what's up? Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm with you, <laughs> bro. We all suffering, man. You know, and now you making me suffer more. Yeah. You know? oh. <laughs> but hey, but sometimes, like you know, sometimes you have a bad day, man. I know people that tell you, "Hey, in the kingdom of God, you can't have a bad day." Like, oh. Yes, you can. <laughs> you can have a bad day, right? Man. But you have to look at it the right way. So yeah. let's just say everything's falling apart because the Bible does tell us that storms are going to come. You talked about on, this man. Saturday night, yes. right? At your, yes. at the church, I, I actually did a live on that. Um, you talked about the storms that come, how it destroys, you know, the foundation that you got and like it's coming. And, and you said something, man, you said you're either, uh, heading into a battle, coming out of a battle or you're in a battle. And the reality is that, you know, not all battles are good ones, right? No. Some battles, they, they leave scars, man. Yes, yes. Some battles hurt. Some battles destroy. And. I tell my wife and my friends this all the time that in a war, there's casualties, yes, man. There are. And sometimes it could be your best friend. Sometimes it could be people you've been around with your whole life that don't understand what God is doing in your life. Amen. Man. Yes. You know, I deal with it a lot. Sheesh, man. Yeah, we ain't called just to have a normal life in Christ, man. We're called to bring the kingdom and that's not a kingdom we can see most of the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, man. People don't understand. So, yeah, man. So let's hit uh, First Peter five ten, and the God of grace, of all grace, who called you to His eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know who he's talking about, but I never suffered a little while. I suffered the. I, was, I guess I wasn't as smart as everybody else, yeah. right? Yeah. Will Himself restore <laughs> you and make you strong, firm and steadfast? Let me read that again. First Peter five ten. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Mm. What, what does that mean to you, Pastor? What does it mean to me? Like, how would you explain it? Like if somebody said, hey, you know, I read this, this, pas this, this passage here. What, what does that mean? What, what does that mean to you? Well, first and foremost, you got to look at restore. You know, what, what does restore mean? You know, restore them yeah. and bring back, you know, so the, these things are meant to break you down, but build him up in you, you know, and, you know, make make you strong in him. You know, greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world, you know. So sometimes these storms, these things that you're going through are meant to break you down. You know, Paul boasted in his weakness. You know, that the spirit of God will rest upon them. No, those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their what strength. Um, have you ever been in a long storm, bro? I mean, like you said, you, you yeah. suffer suffer a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's the armor show you. You know, <laughs> bro. I'm sorry. It's funny to me, man, because I am a suffering servant, man. <laughs> and, and you know, the since the day I gave my life to Christ, it's been yeah. suffering, man. And I'm always I was always that type of guy in the beginning of my life. How come I don't have the life like that, Christian? I go, I don't have the life like that. That person blessed, Lord. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. He's like, because I ain't called you for that. I've called you, you an end time saint. You know, you yeah. there's there is suffering that the entire church is gonna go through. You know yeah. what I mean? It's written, and yeah. we are being prepared for that now by getting in his word and all these things, and he makes us strong in that. So 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 Pastor, let me ask you something. Uh-huh. Let's say you go to a church that just teaches nothing but grace, but doesn't teach you how to have any type of backbone at all. Mm. And a storm hits you. Yeah. What happens? 
What do you mean? What happens to me? No, what do you think will happen to that person? That Because, look, I'll give you an example. Yeah, please. Right. Elaborate a little bit. Okay, look, let me get an example. You have to teach Christians to have some grit. Oh, yeah. Right? You got to teach them to have... Did. Man, <laughs> man, I've gone... Look, hear me out, man. And I got to say this with all the respect Come I can on, muster, man. Come on. I've gone Come to some on. places, Be man. Be real. Be real. <laughs> look. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> look, man. Uh, I ain't trying to play. Look, 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 get out here to be, be look, bank. Come look, on, be I've, real now. I've gone to some places, man, where you know, uh, and I, nah, I just, I, I just gotta be real. I'm, I'm, I'm just cut a little different. So I've gone to places, man, where they, they ask me to come and speak, right? And I go to places where everybody is like, you know so happy and so joyous in the things of the Lord. And anytime you say anything that remotely has to do with any type of suffering, they're just like, Oh, it's no big deal. You know, just, you know, just let's just be in the joy of the Lord. And then they laugh all the time, but it's not a real laugh. Yeah. It's right. like a fake laugh. Yeah. Ha, 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 ha. And, and I'm sitting here like, like, what are you doing? Like, I get it. I get what you're doing. I understand. But, realistically like that doesn't help me if if i'm having an issue where someone just got ran over i can't ha 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 no, no. right or someone's easy. child is dying of cancer i can't ha 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 right i easy. can't i can't pretend like this stuff don't hurt man mm -hmm. i can't pretend like i'm not feeling some kind of compassion yes right and there's some circles that you know, and I'm not attacking. I'm just being honest, right? Because I want to build people up in Christ. I want people to be strong. Because when that storm comes, man, you, like, you got to speak to the storm. You can't laugh at it. Yes. Amen. You can't laugh at the storm. You can't trick it off. You can't. This thing's coming to destroy you. Yes. And you have to take it serious at some point. And what's interesting is that half the storms that we deal with usually come through people who don't know who they are. Yes. And they're not holding any punches. They're not being polite. They're going to come at, they're going to go straight for the juggler, man. And they don't care if you laugh or not. They go, and if they can't destroy you, they're going to destroy your family, your friends. They're going to come at you with everything you got. And, and to be honest, man, I, I can't sit around and laugh it off and not get trained in the midst of that. Because if there's a difference between addressing and confronting something and just avoiding it. And I think sometimes as Christians, we avoid yes. the battle. Come on. Come right. On. Wow. And and this was me in the past. Like, if you guys watch my videos from 12 years ago, like, I used to be, like, drunk in the spirit and just be, like, one of these guys. And that's cool if they want to do that. But as you mature, you realize that ain't really helping anybody. That ain't helping me. But there was a season for that. There was a season. So don't misunderstand me. So I didn't get stuck in that season. I realized when I started watching people around me that started suffering that that wasn't helping them. And it wasn't helping them to become mature and growing. And we have to teach people to grow. So if you do that, don't take this with some, we'll take this with a grain of salt. This is no attack. I'm just saying that's for me because this is talking about suffering. You are going to suffer. The thing is we want to suffer the right way. And so how do you do it? Like, how do you do it when, when you have people around you that they're so positive and and it's not like they're avoiding the the bull in the room, right? It's okay. Let's say we're in, in well, let's say we're in a china cabinet and there's a bull in there, right? And you know this bull at any time can destroy every piece of china that you have in there, right? And and I'm talking about like as like in relationships, right? Like let's say that you're married to to someone who's got a hanger problem, right? Or someone who who just responds very carnally. You can't laugh at that. No. You know, like if you have a husband who's addicted to crack, you can't laugh at that. If you're a Christian and you came to the Lord and you have people around you who maybe you have a husband who beats the wife or someone who just is really cruel and mean and, and it really hurts down in your soul. Like, how do you grow in that? Like, how do you grow when you have, you know, the husband who doesn't pay attention to the wife and the wife feels like she's alone and she's suffering inside? Like, how do we allow Holy Spirit to teach us to grow in that, you know? Or, you know, or the husband who feels like he doesn't feel respected by his wife. And so he feels he has to go get it somewhere else. Or he starts looking and, and it starts eating away at him because he doesn't know what to do, you know? So how do, how do we do that? Like, how do we grow in that, you know? Man, man. <laughs> 
Gee. Oh man. That that's where commitment comes in though, bro. You know, know. It's, it's it's that's where you're showing the commitment you made, not so much. It, it's those are hard things, man. Um, and it's really hard to even explain that that's something, you know, uh there's no one right question for that. Yeah. You know, right one one right answer for that. But I mean, how, what if you are the man that used to be angry, you know? Yeah. And you ain't, what if you was the crackhead? You know what I mean? The crack addict. You know what I mean? <laughs> crack it, you know what? Well, that used to be me. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. What, if, what if you was that and you ain't it no more? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, I can't talk about the woman. It's hard for me to understand a woman, you know, who had to deal with my, me and my past. You understand? Yeah. Um, but but from my perspective in regard to being the the angry man being the one that was you know on the dope and all that stuff yeah. you know i know it didn't help uh as a christian having a christian you know spouse or something if they if if i'm angry about something or this they say hallelujah you know what i mean in a, in an antagonizing way you know what i mean <laughs> rather than you know and it's yeah. kind of like what you were talking about with the people that's always happy and showing joy and you going through something you know yeah it's, it's it, i mean are we doing it you know for real or yeah. are we just doing this because of something we've 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 just developed a habit you know and and this type of persona you know yeah so so i i, I that's a hard question for me to answer i, I can't really answer that one brother yeah <laughs> Yeah. I'm sorry, bro. Yeah, I get it. I mean, it, it's I just believe that's that's a that's a place, man, that, that Christ has to bring you through that part. Yeah. You know, there's no man that can lead you through that. Yeah. You know, so it, it just takes to have a real solid relationship with the Lord to get through those things. That's what it is, man. So. That's what it is. And Second Timothy 312 mm -hmm. says, in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Come on now. Ooh. Man, I got a question. Okay, I got I got a question. Hebrews five eight, there it is. Yeah, I got I got a question, man. Like this is this is going okay. This is gonna be hard, right? Because I don't know where where everybody's at on here, right? Okay, so everybody's gonna be persecuted. Does this mean that every attack is of the enemy, or can we also be attacked by carnal Christians who refuse to get into the spirit? Both. Okay, so here's the thing. So this persecution. Could it be intentional persecutions because we're Christians or could they just be persecuting the Christ in us because we're not doing what Christ has called us to do and therefore we feel persecuted? Let's, let's say that again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like conviction, right? Yes, yes. Like let's say that I refuse to walk out the Christ. Mm -hmm. Then the Christ in me is being persecuted. Yes. I am persecuting the Christ in me. Yes. Because I'm not allowing him to be who he is. Yes. So nine times out of 10, the persecution that we're receiving, we're receiving from ourselves because we refuse to suffer for Christ and we suffer because we're not getting what we want. That makes sense. <sighs> yes, it does. It makes a lot of sense, man. I think about that a lot, man. Cause I, you know, I know I should be doing certain things like Jesus was persecuted enough. Why am I persecuting him? Man, can you? you know why can't he just be who he is through me why do i have to tell him to shut up why do i have to tell him to sit down why do i have to tell him we ain't gonna do that like that's crazy you know i think about that a lot you know um and when you're married you know this better than anybody like because you want the jesus to love your wife the jesus in you right and so if you've been married for a while you know man like this is this like when they say that marriage is represents you know the church they ain't playing around like that's that's a real <laughs> deal right because you were like baby if you're watching i love you <laughs> <laughs> you know and you know because when i first got married bro like i was a crack addict man for 10 years katie you know she was an atheist she uh you know she was a meth addict and, and bro it was rough man people couldn't my, my mom couldn't even be around us because we were fighting all the time like we were fighting and we didn't even know why we were fighting we we're just fighting because that was we had a lot of fight in us mm -hmm. right fight the wrong fight. <laughs> that wasn't the good fight of faith yes, yes that was the dumb fight mm -hmm. right because 
we don't even remember like we sat down and talked like do you even remember the stuff we used to fight about she'd be like no <laughs> like that's what i'm getting at like we fought over the stupidest stuff right and now we fight for the right things mm. now we're fighting for hey man like we got to do the right thing like we got to fight for what god wants and you know maybe i might not be on board all the time in certain areas and she might not and then that's where the persecution comes in because i'll say to her you know hey man like you know what we need to be doing and she'd be like well man i'm not like you or i'll say well you know that's you and then so we got this back and forth going on and that's why it's important to be on the same page but at the same time you know if you get into an argument you gonna suffer man you know you'll walk away and you might get into pride and be like you know i ain't gonna say sorry i ain't gonna you know you get all carnal and stuff um but it's the christ in you that's trying to show you who he is you know and nine times out of ten we don't ever let jesus out man yeah, that, you know yeah. i mean i've been married for several years and it doesn't matter what the argument's about man that separation that lack of oneness with my wife man that's suffering in itself you feel me yeah because i only want her to be one with me you know and, and when even when there's little minor things you know you don't feel you ever walk in the room you know and you just don't feel like that 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 connection is there spiritually you know and, and a lot of the times it's just because one's after the flesh and the other one's after the spirit you know one one's after the things of god yeah you know so so i mean that's suffering in itself man I, I thank god for the wife i have man she's she's man she's a real strong woman of god she said to me yesterday you know we're going through a real bad storm right now wow you know and and people don't know what we're going through right now um in april uh my house caught on fire we've been living in a hotel for three months man yeah i mean it, it, contractors is doing us wrong i mean it's bad and i'm a little frustrated with the situation you know and so my wife is seeing this frustration you know and normally she's always trying to say things to me to get me to feel better you know saying yeah. the things that should be said but right now she's doing something she's never done before man and she came to me yesterday she was like you know i remember what you taught me and i said what i'll teach you because the way i'm looking right now <laughs> <laughs> in this situation you know yeah. I, I i'm teaching you totally wrong i'm frustrated you know i'm upset yeah. and you know i'm not lashing out or something but she can just see it in me you know uh, the, the 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 representation of christ i'm supposed to bring i just ain't focused on that right now yeah. because i'm focused on my family i'm focused on my house focus on my children having a refuge you know yeah and so we was at church on wednesday and it was before service and she can tell i was getting trying to get ready or you know get the last part of my notes together and she comes up to the altar man and she just says you you remember when you taught me this and she said one day you were preaching and you were like a man what a, the wife that a man needs is a wife that when he's walking and following christ and serving the lord that she's not behind him coaching him but she's behind him that when he feels like turning back she's the one being pushed yeah pushing him or turning him back you know yeah and so this this trial that i've been in in these last three months you know because this ain't a short trial you know this is a three-month deal here you yeah. know um she's she's been that one to get my attitude right you yeah. know with the lord again <laughs> yeah Wow, yeah. you know foxes have dens and birds have nests but the son of man yeah. you know so she's like look you blessed you blessed you ain't even got a place to rest your head you know he making you like you yeah <laughs> man so all the years of teaching my wife man she had this opportunity you know not yeah. to throw it back at me but to show me man this is what you taught me and you yeah. know i love you i, I want to show you you know that yeah. look i see you suffering and i'm suffering with you you know yeah. we said we're gonna suffer this out together and and you know that's that's wow. that's a good wife you know yeah and you know what's really sad is you guys could get really carnal mm -hmm. and when you get carnal you suffer together but you're suffering because you can't stand each other yes right and that's what's crazy because the storm can get so big that you forget to row together yes and you start rowing against, against each other each and so other. you're going in a circle come on now come you on know now. and and i've seen that you know it's happened to me it's happened to people that i know 
is that storm will get so loud that we forget that in the midst of the storm, God's trying to bring us together, man. Yes. And when he can bring us together, then we can speak to the storm together. And so if you got one person, you know, <laughs> I can't believe we're talking about this because hey, my wife, because my wife, she, it's all good. <laughs> you seen the, did you see the clouds earlier? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. this was funny because I was getting ready for the podcast, right? Getting things ready. <laughs> and Katie pulls over at a gas station. She's like, man, I think there's a tornado out here. And yeah. I'm like, what's going on? And she's like, oh, I think there's a tornado. And I'm like, where are you at? She's at the gas station. And I said, how do you know there's a tornado? She says, it's because it's cloudy. And I said, do you hear any sirens? <laughs> and she said, no. I said, if you don't hear any sirens, you're good. Yes, yes. Hey, man, there's a teaching in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not everything's a storm. Mm. Come on now. Not everything's on now. that bad. No, it's not. We can right? make it worse. Right? We can make it worse. And I told Katie, just drive home. You're good. And I stood outside and I said, you're good. I'll stay on the phone with you. And she drove home. And the reason that she got scared is because, you know, years ago when, when we lived in Great Bend, she was driving back from Hoisington or, she, you know, she used to be a dental assistant and uh, she got caught in a tornado, a rap tornado. Oh, wow. So her and her friends were in the car as this tornado just went by and it shook the car and everything. And it just put this fear of tornadoes in her. And, you know, every time she's by herself, she remembers that. And once again, that is the suffering that I'm talking about. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's growing in that area and it's like, Hey man, who are you? Who's the Christ in you in the midst of that storm? But this is a physical storm, right? And so when I'm not there, I have to talk to her on the phone. I have to be that voice for her and be like, hey, it's going to be okay. You know, I'll be on the phone with you. Like, you're going to be all right and it's going to be okay. And so that's the part of like us focusing, right? Like she's focusing on the storm and I'm focusing on who the Christ is in her. And my thing is I'm just trying to get her home. You know, she got my children in the car. I'm trying to get you home. In the same way, Christ is just trying to get you home. Man. Yes. He's just trying to get you on that, on Come that on. foundation, right? <laughs> you're talking about that foundation. That's it. Right. Did you did you want to talk about that foundation, man? The foundation. Yeah. Oh, man. Come on, no, man. man. What I mean, what is your foundation? That's the key, brother. You know, foundation is so much, man. I mean, knowing who he is, number one, uh, that's the ultimate foundation. You know, not just hearing his word, but what? Doing it. You know, sometimes, you know. In order to build, well, all the time, if you got to build the right foundation by being a hearer and a what? Yeah. Dude, this is what he said. I will liken this man who built his house upon a rock. And when the floods ascended, you know, the storms came, you know, it, it hit, it beat vehemently, you know, upon that house, but it stood. So these storms. Are, What's the word he used? Behe but vehement. That's like slamming. Yeah, right? that's that's not. That's, that's like not, WWE. Yeah, that's not the turnbuckle. That's it. That's off the top <laughs> rope. You know, <laughs> you know, so, so that's, you know, it's tough when these, these ain't, these ain't no punk storms, you know what I mean? And so I always question, this is the one thing that I always question, you know, many of us who have come to Christ, you know, we from the street, right? Yeah. You know, we, we, I call, I call him Matthew, the tax collector. Yeah. You know, Matthew was what he was a tax. He took somebody. I call Matthew the, the, the common day dope dealer. You know, yeah. who who wasn't good enough. But when Christ called him, you know, he wouldn't even look up and said, you know, have mercy on me. Yeah. You know, and so how can we in this world, you know, living all out, suffering for ourselves, you know, suffering for our will, suffering for what we want. We don't care. You know, we'll get up. We'll, we'll stay out all night, and get drunk and then go to work suffering. You know, what I mean? <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll go out all night, you know what I mean? Hanging out with the homies, you know, messing up and come home to the wife at home and suffer, you know what I mean? <laughs> you, you know, but we're afraid to suffer Jesus. Oh, you, my you, God. you feel me? You know, you don't want to stay up all night in the world. You don't want to stay all, all up all night in prayer. You know, you don't want to get up early. You don't want to, you know, you don't want to go out your way. You know, you want to go to the church down the block five minutes, you know what I mean? But, but you know that. 45 minutes away is, is where you need to be. Yeah. You know, the convenience doctrine, you, you feel me? Yeah. And and I find so many people, they, 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 they live the hard life and yo, praise be to God to everybody out here for real. If, if you come from a life like me, I know Pete had a tough past too, you know, but what makes us think it's going to be easy now? 
I mean, who sold you the lie yeah. between the altar and the door? You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Because you're going to suffer more in the church, man. You're going to be persecuted more by people in the in the congregation, you know what I yeah. mean, than you are people in the street, you know? But that's where Christ needs to be more than anything. You know, that's what people don't understand. The Lord loves his church, you know? And we live in this world where we don't have to go to church. No, you don't have to go to church, but I'm not going to let nobody come up in my house. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I yeah. made it in the image of the Lord. You're going to let some people come up in your house and act a fool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. so, but, but why do we go through this tough life suffering for self? Right. And as soon as we come to church, man, and, and, and we feel like somebody looks at us wrong or, or talks bad about us, or, you yeah. know, this, we want to lead a church or we want to say, forget Jesus. You know what I mean? Yeah. Come on, man. What do you think God prepared us for all them years being in this world and just called us one day yeah. because he wants his church back. You know, he wants his people back. You know, he wants wow. his kingdom back, bro. <laughs> I was trained. Like I was trained to be a disciple. Come on now. Cause I did 10 years of eating out of trash cans. Come on now. <laughs> I did 10 there, years of sleeping on the curb. <laughs> I did 10 years of being homeless. Sorry, slur. Being on the streets. I've been 10 years of fighting everybody in the mama. Come on. Come on, man. Like, yes. I got some thick skin. Yes. And the minute I came to Christ, I got a dirty look. I couldn't handle it. Yeah. Okay. Like, come on, come man. Come on, man. Like, come on. <laughs> to God be the glory, bro. This ain't about us. Bro, I used to walk <laughs> for hours trying to find crack. Come on now. I had no money. And I was trained oh, how to, I was trained how to raise money. Now we get somewhere right. in this. Come on. <laughs> I was training how to raise money. Hey man, you got any change? You got any money? Hey man. Hey, I, I you got any I'm like with you, bro. Boy, I go up to people. I didn't I wasn't ashamed. Hey man, I wasn't ashamed man, to ask for money. Man. I wasn't ashamed to like steal and lie and, Come on. and do whatever I needed to make sure that I got what I needed. Now we talk. Right. Man. And now I'm in Christ, man. I'm afraid to speak up. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid to walk nah. up the street. Like, suffering come on. For righteousness come sake, on, man. There's the answer right here, you know. On, suffering bro. for his sake. Come on. You know the expectations, man. You should have. We worried about the expectations of other people. You should have better expectations of yourself, man. You man. know. I know, guys. <laughs> I was just I was talking about this at the church, man. I know guys that will stare each other down and lose their lives. Come on, now. There'll be a guy with a gun come pointing on, it at man. him, and he'd be like, I ain't afraid to die. Yeah. What you going to Like, dying over over, over selfishness, stupid, over pride. Man. And, and, and it's like, dude, you're going to lose your life over the stupidest things, but as a Christian, mm -hmm. you can't even stand up and be like, hey, man, like I don't think that's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like come on. what? A brother's man for adversity, like, bro. Come on, bro. <laughs> like you had a gun in your face, bro, and you didn't back down. And you got some guy over here talking about something that you know you shouldn't be standing for, and you gonna run? Hey, brother, why you judging me? <laughs> you condemning me, bro? That's funny. Why are you condemning me, man? I ain't condemning. <laughs> you. I'm loving you, man. Yeah, I'm telling you the truth in love, man. You know, that's the thing. The church needs to come out. You know, they need to they need to be real, bro. The people yeah. of God, let's forget about the church, man. Just what is this all about? What are we here for? You know what I mean? Yeah. We're, we're, we need the truth, man. We need the real gospel. The, the people, the the Jesus' disciples, man. Yeah. Let's just be real. What was their life like? Yeah, man. They went through a lot, bro. For what? And you know what? Jesus taught them how to suffer even when he was with them. Come on. Come on, man. That's the thing. We we looking for this. We looking for this way out. You know, we, we talk about that thief on the cross, you know, who said, you know, we want to be that thief on the cross that in the last day of our life, you know, hey, Lord, remember me. Yeah. You know, what is God going to remember you for, though? Yeah. Is that I, I, I don't know about you. I want to hear well done. What? Yeah. Good and faithful. You know, I want to show God I was full of a faith that pleased him. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think many of us, you know, we have faith and I don't know why I feel led to go this way. I, I hope it's OK. Yeah, with go you. ahead, man. You know, there's two types of faith, man. You know, there's a faith that pleases self and there's a faith that pleases God. Yeah. You know, and, and I love how 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 you got that pepper, man. You know how you got yeah. pepper. You know, the yeah. old man wants to please himself. And it was living to please itself, and it wants to come into God's kingdom and, and teach others how to what? Yeah. Please themselves, you know. Um, and, and I just say this because how are you going to know you suffering for God? Um, I believe when you get to this place of living, you know, 
For without faith is what? It's impossible, impossible. to please God. That's what it so says. I believe faith, real faith, is a is a, a, a well, it's a confidence assurance of what we hope for. Are you hoping to please God? Yeah. Or you're hoping to be pleased yourself? You know, for Christ, he lived to please his father, you yeah. know. And so until we get to the point, you know, that we are living and we can say with that beyond a shadow of a doubt, man, I'm going, I'm, I'm, I'm living for the Lord. It don't matter what happens to me. It don't matter what I go through. I'm going to show God that yeah. I, that he's worthy and that I appreciate all that he did for me because it all goes back to the cross. You know, it all yeah. goes back to Jesus, man. It's not about us. It's about Jesus, man. Yeah. And we got to, we always got to remember, but that the finish ain't here. You know, yeah. the finish is with him eternally, yeah. you know? So this world is just a training ground, yeah. you know? And I thank God all the time that he gave me a monster truck. Come on, that's now. me. Hey, man. I'm a monster you truck, use bro. The, use the ox. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I ain't get stuck in this mud. Come on, now. I lived in the mud. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't get stuck with this. Man, I know some Christians, bro, they throw rods all the time. Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro. Like, I know Christians who throw rods all day long, bro. Yeah. They overheat. Yes. Come on now. They break down. Come on now. You talking. They run out of gas. You talking, man. Right? Come on, yeah, man. Those that wait like, upon the Lord come shall on, renew man. their strength. So I tell them, like, you know, and so what good is this power, bro, if we can't even, like, push through? Have you ever thought about that? Like, man. I teach people to walk in power, bro. And, and you know, and people tell me, hey, you know, I want to heal the sick. I want to raise the dead. I'm like, how about you just lift yourself up out of that funk? Man. How about you just get, how about you just get, get out of that suffering? How about you just rise up right now? How about you use now. that power, man? You how about you allow that power to empower you, you know, to push through? How about how about you just stand there and just take it? Endure. Ugh. Endure. It sounds so easy, man, man. But when you get into an argument, it would. <sighs> come on now. You ain't always gotta have the last word. Oh my god. <laughs> Man, oh, bro, man. like it sounds so easy, but it's not. No, it's not easy. Come on, man, to keep your mouth shut, bro. Man, man, come on now. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. Now you're talking. Now, you, now you're talking right now. <laughs> Jesus was standing before Pilate, man. He didn't say anything. Mm -mm. And Pilate told him five times you would let him go. Five times you wanted to let him go. And he even told him, like, who are you? Who are you? Like, it was per he was perplexed. Like, dude, like, don't you know that I have the power to release you? My father. Right? <laughs> Come on. Check this out. The power to release him. But he was never bound. Come on. That's what it's all about. Good word. Come on. He was never bound. Yes. How can he release him if he never had him? Yes. And you feel that. Yeah, he was made for Come it. Come on, man, He was Ghost. made for it. Come, Come on. on, man. You can't man. bind him. Man, that's can't a good word him, there, bro. Right? And so in the same way, like, how can I, you know, stand? And how can I, like, in the midst of the world that's coming against me, right? And the world that's coming against what I believe and coming against the Christ in me, like, how can I stand in the midst of persecution, you know? And how can I grow? Because... The woe is me stuff, you're not going to grow. Mm -mm, no. You know, the help me, rescue me stuff, that's not going to, I'm not going to grow in that. Because I tell people this all the time. You're the people you've been waiting for. There is no plan B. Yes. Ain't nobody going to show up. Mm -mm. Because if you're in the funk and you're in a hole and you in trouble, you're right where you need to be. Yes. All you need to do is manifest who the Christ is in Come you. And you can get out. Yes, sir. You know, yes, I was talking about this this morning. I had the meeting uh, with the guys in Malaysia. I was up at five in the morning doing the doing the school. Um, one of the guys asked me about as he walked through the valley of the shadow of death. Right. And I told him that, you know, the beautiful thing about that is that. Death is there. Yes. But why is there a shadow? Come on. It's because God's behind it. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. God's behind it. Yes. Yeah. Which means that even in the midst of the shadow of death, God's behind it. But here's the key. It's only, you're only in the shadow because you haven't recognized you're the light yet. Yes. And when you recognize you're the light, there's no more shadow. Yes. So God's behind you and he's behind death, but you're in front and the Christ in you is trying to be glorified. 
is trying to manifest in the midst of death, trying to show you who you are in that valley. And if you understand who you are in that valley, God doesn't show up. The Christ in you manifests and it shines. Yes. Yes. And that's what it's all about in the kingdom of God. Teach people how to shine in the midst of their suffering. Teach people how to shine in the midst of what they're going through. And that's how God gets the glory. You know, it's how do you do it? It, it ain't, you know, it ain't just about putting your head down and getting through it. It's about, like you said, manifesting the Christ, you know, in the situation. So I think many of us, you know, that's what we do. We just know how to get through it, you know, but we don't know how to manifest the Christ, which yeah. is the key. The key to everything right there. So let me end the scripture. Colossians 124. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. And I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his blood or of his body, which is the church. Let me read it one more time. Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you. And I'm filled up in my flesh what is still lacking in regards to Christ's afflictions. I should read that in the King James, man. Yeah, because that sounds. I got the NIV because some of the stuff like, you know, I had a guy tell me the other day, you read the King James and it's like he's, he's from Asia. Right. So I'm like, all right, I'll put the NIV on here. But then I'm like, yeah, this don't this don't sound right. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you did you want to read it, bro? It's Colossians 124. Yeah, I'll pick it up real quick. Hang on a second. I'll pull it up. Yeah. Yeah. It says. Whereof I Paul and made a minister who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake which is the church man that's deep man what does that say to you man it means is i paul's a paul's the leader of the church you know he's he's actually what he's going through ain't ain't for him is for us it's to be an example number one you know um it, what's it talk about and filling up that which is behind of the afflictions you know he so so that kind of throws me uh, off a little bit. What, what do you get out of that one? Filling up that is behind. Well, I know that he got whipped five times. <laughs> <laughs> shipwrecked. He got shipwrecked. Stoned. Sticked, caned, arrested. <laughs> oh, like, man. Man. Man, I thought I had it bad. Come on now. I, I, had, I had that scripture to share tonight. Uh, <laughs> could you imagine? There's even a verse that says that you would have gave me your own eyes. Yes. Yeah. Man. Which and he had just been stoned. They stoned him to death, left him for dead. Pa got up, walked fifteen miles, yeah. and preached the gospel after they stoned him. And he said, "You'd have gave me your own eyes if you could have." Imagine how his face must have looked for him to say that. Yeah. I'm still preaching. And still preaching, <laughs> still man. Preaching. You couldn't stone the preach out of him. You couldn't do. I mean, and and here's what's crazy. Like, and this, here's what's crazy, right? Because we always talk about, you know, the woman who was caught in adultery. Remember, we talk about the people who wanted to stone her. Mm -hmm. But we forget that Jesus is actually trying to also reach the ones who have stones in their hands. Yeah, he was trying to get both, man. Yeah. And that was Paul. Yeah, yeah. Paul was the one yeah. who held the coats as they stoned Stephen. Yes. yes. Right? Yeah. And the whole time, Jesus is chasing him down. Think about that. Yeah, that's that's awesome, crazy man. to me. That's so awesome. he's on both sides. He's like, hey, I'm for the woman, but I'm also for you guys that are holding the stones. Yeah. Like, I want to help both of you. And could you imagine, like, like I don't know, like, I don't know. This is just me. I think about this all the time. Have you ever, um, were so sold out, about, you were so convinced that you were right, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> you were so convinced. Well. You know, well, I mean, you were so convinced, like, no, I know, yes. I know, you know, you know, and, and <laughs> look, man, you get somebody right now. Okay. Look, look, you get somebody. I, I was, I was in, I was in, in Poria at, I was at my brother, mother, brother-in-law's house in Opie, Kansas, Opie. Oh my gosh. The name of that town. Opie. Opie. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Opie. Like it looks like Opie, Opie. how it sounds. That's exactly uh, how it looks. Uh -huh. So we were there and my wife gave me her wedding ring. And she told me to put it away because she was going to go swimming. And I, I could have swore up and down that she didn't give it to me. So we were getting in the car. And I said, because we we're going home, I said, where's your wedding ring at? And she said, 
I gave it to you. And I was like, no, you didn't. You didn't give me your wedding ring. And she said, yes, I did. I said, no, you didn't. I started getting defensive. <laughs> I'm like, no, you didn't. You didn't give me your wedding ring. Like, come on. Like, I, you think I would have forgot that? I know how much I paid for that. Mm. Like, this is what I'm thinking, right? Yeah. And she's like, no, I gave it to you. And I said, no. Like, I, I, I can specifically remember where I was standing. You didn't give it to me. You didn't. So we were in the car, and I just swore up and down that she didn't give it to me. <laughs> and she says, you put it in your bag. Uh-oh. I said, no, I didn't. Oh, there it is. <laughs> hey, when you're wrong like that, you're going to hear it the whole oh, way the home. Way home. Yep. Right? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to suffer for Christ's yeah, sake. There it is. Right? Keep your mouth shut. And Take so, it. And so, now imagine Paul. Mm. Paul killed a gang Man, of people. Come on now. He arrested a gang of people. And he could have swore up and down that he was doing what God called him to do. And then mm -hmm. Jesus showed up and knocked him off his horse. Come on now. Street name straight. He had to go to. <laughs> <laughs> had to get it straight way. You know. Yeah, man. He said he threw him in the dirt. Come on now. Threw him in the dirt. Blind he fell in the little, dirt. Have you ever felt? Have you ever just felt in the dirt? Man. Have you ever just fell in the dirt and you were just like, you had, you had dirt all over you and you're thinking, why am I in the dirt? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Humbly. How do you go from the horse to the dirt Humbly. that fast? Humbly. Right. <laughs> Sorry. And, and okay, you know what you know what gets me about that story? He goes blind. And and I don't know if you guys understand this, but for a Pharisee who's blind, that means that he's in sin. He can't, his whole career's over. Mm. No one's gonna listen to him because that means he's in sin. He can never enter the synagogue. He can't work. He's going to beg the rest of his life because everybody's going to turn their back on Paul. Deep. Because if he's blind, it's from God. Yeah, it's cursed. Yeah. Right? So what does he do? And for three days, he's thinking, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Where did I go wrong? <laughs> I'm the guy that was stoning people because uh, they were in sin. Yeah. I was the guy arresting people because they were not honoring God. Yeah. And here I am walking around blind as a bat mm -hmm. talking about I'm the most righteous of all. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. no, you're not, dude. Blinded you're blind. blind. Not only that, you have pride. to be led by someone into the city looking crazy. Yes. Right? That's a crazy thought. Mm 